Hello everybody, this is Mike Fauché and I'd like to do a video on Q-Tier. This is something that I actually haven't tried very much until recently and I thought it would be useful to share with everybody. As always, if you haven't subscribed, please do so and check that notifications icon so you'll be notified of future content. First of all, let's talk a little bit about what Q-Tier is. Q-Tier is a way to get, to kind of co-mingle SSDs and, and hard drives. Um, as we have all experienced at some point, hard drives, mechanical hard drives, are not the fastest things in the world. And, you know, they provide limited performance, but they do provide large capacities. SSDs, on the other hand, are usually much smaller in capacity and are extremely fast. So Q-Tier actually combines those two technologies. So basically it adds itself as a... Um, a kind of an interim between requirement to, to store data and the mechanical drives. So in other words, when you copy data to your NAS, it will go through the SSDs first and then later will get copied to the mechanical drives. So it's a way to get kind of a combination of performance and storage. So you can get large amounts of storage via your mechanical drives and you can get the performance of an SSD um, without actually having to put a lot of money into SSD storage. So it's kind of a nice blend of both. So what I'd like to do is kind of cover how it sets up or how you set it up and then we'll do a quick comparison test between with and without using Qtier. So first off to uh, enable Qtier um, it's kind of rather simple. Of course um, I've already installed two SSDs as you can see here. S1 and S2. Um, I've put in two 500 gigabit gigabyte drives um, for to be used in the Q tier. So to set it up, we're going to go to Q tier and we're going to say upgrade to Q tier. Now the wizard comes up and asks us to select the storage pool. Well, I only have one storage pool on this particular drive, so it's going to be storage pool one. Okay, and this is where we get into the actual configuration. So the SATA drives are already configured. Um, there's no enclosure units or anything of this type on this device. So the only thing we have is to configure is SSDs. So I'm gonna select both of these SSDs. Now, one thing to remember when using Qtier that's not necessarily applicable to using a cache is Q-tier does require redundancy. So you have to have something with some fault tolerance in it. Otherwise, it's not going to let you set it up. And the obvious reason for that is it's since it's at the forefront of your data storage, um, it needs to have some type of fault tolerance in the event of a drive failure. Because the data could be on that SSD for, you know, a day. So um, it needs to have two, at minimum of two drives. So we're going to go ahead and click next. Now the next option it gives us is uh, to enable SSD over, over provisioning. Now over provisioning does impact performance in a positive way. So the more you allocate to over perform uh, over provisioning, the you know you'll get more consistent sustained performance. So I'm going to go ahead and give it 20%. Click next. So this is a summary of what we have. Um, we've got a new RAID group. It's two disks, two SSDs, and we have an existing RAID group comprised of four physical hard drives. So, and then we have some over provisioning, uh, about 91 gigabytes roughly of over provisioning. So at this point, we're ready to click finish. So let's go ahead and click finish going to warn us that some services will be stopped temporarily so I'm going to say OK. So it now gives us the message that it's upgrading the pool. So let's go ahead and take a look at the background tasks and it is just starting so not sure how long this is going to take so I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and we'll come back to it um, when it's complete. OK so it's finished. So it took a little over six minutes or so to do, much faster than I thought it would be. And the q tier has been set up. So let's explore it a little bit and see what, what it has to offer. 
Okay, now that it's completed, let's explore some of the options it has because it is configurable. You can make some adjustments to it. So if you look here under the storage pool, you'll see that the auto tier icon is, has been added to the storage pool. This tries to interpret your file structure and assign it where you th the Q tier will be most beneficial, but it may not match what you really want to do because there may be, there may be, um, you know, folders or volumes that you don't necessarily want to tier. So let's take a look at how we can configure this. I'm going to go to shared folders. And if we look at shared folders, you'll see that we now have an enable auto tiering option on these folders. So we can selectively add, disable or enable. The folder that I'm using for testing is public. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that one. But there may be others such as videos that you might not want to enable it to. So you can go ahead and, and customize that. And this is just a test system. So in your production environment, you might want to do, make some different choices. But I'm doing this right now just so that we can actually test the performance. And I like this feature because there's a lot of things such as, you know, you, know, you might be copying Blu-rays or something or rips to, uh, to your NAS. And you certainly don't necessarily want to pass all that through an SSD tier. So there's, you know, selectively you can, it's helpful to be able to turn off specific folders. So now that we've enabled it on the public folder, which is what I'm using for test, let's give it a shot and let's do some testing. Now to give you a better idea, what I'm going to do is actually using the same files and I'm going to overlay the results on top of one another in real time. So you can kind of see the difference in performance. Okay. So what I'm going to do is grab the same files. And I'm going to copy those. Okay, as you can see, there is a, there's a difference. There's a significant difference. It's not night and day. It's not two times, three times faster, but there is a significant performance gain overall. So given the fact that we're using uh, two relatively inexpensive SSDs, um, we are able to more or less turbocharge this NAS unit, which is otherwise fairly slow in overall performance and give it a little bit of boost. So if you've got the capabilities or the space in your in your NAS unit to add a couple SSDs, you might want to consider using QTIR. I've been experimenting with uh, with it for a little bit and I'm actually kind of impressed. Now, the first question that always comes to my mind is if I try something or if I use something, can I take it apart? So um, there, this can be disabled uh, as of recent updates to QTS. They now have given you the option to, to basically disable QTIR. So let's take a quick look at that. Okay, so let's take a look and see how we go about removing the QTIR. So we'll go back into QTIR, manage QTIR storage. And it's telling us that the um, tiering on demand allows us to disable auto tier for shared folders, so which we kind of looked at already. So I'll click OK. And then there's a couple other options I want to talk about while I'm in this particular screen. Then we'll go and take a look and see how you actually disable it. The By default, when you set up Q tier, um, it's kind of automatic. It's, it's basically waits until the system is, is sitting idle and then it starts moving the data from your SSDs to your um, hard drive storage. You can change that. I don't know exactly why you'd want to do it, but you can. Um, so you can actually go to uh, manual tiering 
where you actually set a schedule. And that might be useful if you have some rather large SSDs and you want to just do it after hours, a small business environment or something like that. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at automatic. Just know that you can change it to do whatever you want it to do. Okay, so to remove it, we'll click on storage pool. And if we click on remove, you'll see the option here for remove ultra high speed tier. So if I did that, it would go ahead and disable the, the uh, Q tier. Now I'm not going to do that right now, but just know that you can. There's a one caveat that you need to make sure, and it's most likely not an issue, but you need to be aware of it. There needs to be enough free space in your hard drive storage to handle offloading everything that's in Q tier when you disable it. So in other words, let's say you've got 400 gigs of data on your SSDs. When you disable Q tier, there needs to be enough room on your drive storage to take that 400 gig and move it back to your drive array. So not usually a problem given the ratio between SSD storage and hard drive storage, but I just want to make you aware of it. Anyway, that's a quick overview of Q-Tier. Um, it's actually uh, better than I thought in, in working with it for a little bit. I actually found it to be to breathe a little bit more performance into the NAS unit. So I'm going to probably leave it for a while and may experiment with some of my other units um, and start enabling Q-Tier on some of those as well. And there's some, they're always upgrading features um, on this thing, so you want to keep your eyes open. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications icon so you'll be notified of new content. And if you like this video, throw it a like. We'll see you on the next video, and thanks for watching.